Well, hey there, folks. July 27th, 2023. Be August here pretty soon. Just got done mowing the lawn. It's a Thursday. I did go ahead and use a new fertilizer on it last time I mowed it. And I uh, went ahead and turned up the time on the sprinkler clock. So currently it's getting, the, the lawn anyway, it's getting 20 minutes. Um, 20 minutes a night. I water at 11 p.m. That way it has a ample time to soak in there all night. I don't know if you can tell, but it's looking a lot greener, a lot darker. I think the fertilizer did a little bit of that, but just turning the water up has probably done the main part. Um, we can see 100 degree days up here. Usually, I'm going to say the last, the last week or so, we've been right about 96, 97 in the day. And we still get down in the um, low 70s to high 60s at night. But yeah, it's taken 20 minutes a day to water this. And I know some folks out there will say you're not supposed to water it every day. You know, do it three times a week. Well, I'm going to tell you, that doesn't work here. It might work where you're from, where there's humidity. Up here, our, if we don't have any rain, our average humidity is about 6 to 7%. So you got to keep a lot of water on the grass to keep it green. Anyways, for the end of July, uh, I've got the grass looking real nice. I'm real happy with it. Here's just the normal stuff there, the apple tree, the pear tree. Pears are getting bigger on there. Hopefully we'll have enough pears. We can make a pie with it or something or another. There's the little uh, peach tree there. It's on its third year, but this is the first year that it's had any fruit. It's got about four or five fruits on there. You can see a couple of them. So that's nice. Same old, same old here in the dog days of summer. Here's a butterfly bush here in the bucket. Um, I've moved these up to 12 minutes a night, The um, all the drip lines, because everything on the whole backyard it's all on drip everything you see besides the lawn even my fish barrel here is on drip here let's see if we can get some of those koi fish there if i don't walk up too close i won't spook them and there's a lot of them in there though and like i say every time i didn't put them in there they just appeared so either they came on on the bird's legs or they came in on the plants i put in there last year but they've been in there over a year now here's the grapevine over here it's doing good, getting pretty big. I think we're gonna get some grapes this year. Some grapes right there. Here's that butterfly bush again. It's struggling a little bit from the heat as you can see, but you know we can only do so much up here with the lack of humidity and the warm weather. You know, some days it's, it's been about 100, 103. Just depends. It varies. Here, guys, just do a quick rock, walk around like I usually do. There's that uh, pear tree again. Going to have a lot of Asian pears. That's what I'm most excited for. I really like these Asian pears. and If you buy them in the store, you know they're not cheap. This here is a um, banana pepper. Looks like it's doing, these peppers always do great in full sun and a lot of heat. You can see it's starting to, starting to flower there. So we'll probably definitely get some banana peppers on it this year. That one I did not start from seed. That one I bought a little plant at, uh, I think I bought it at Lowe's. There's another grapevine over here. Here's up here at the top of the yard, there's a big old sunflower. Look at that sucker. There's my goat. Meh. There's that little peach tree. There's a big old cherry tree. Like I said in a couple of other videos, those have already come and went. Those are one of the first things to fruit there. 
Here's these. What are these? Yuccas, I think. I forget. I think they're yucca, something like that. Desert plant. You see a lot of these down south, southern Nevada. But you can see this thing is just uh, making seed pods like crazy. These will have hundreds of seeds in them right there. They'll burst open. Maybe I'll have to see if anybody wants them because I don't want any more of these. Here's another butterfly bush. It's bloomed, but it's not overly spectacular up here. It does get full sun all day, so it's doing the best it can. Here's a day lily here. Here it's already bloomed. Here's another one of these. Just look at all the seed pods on it. Look at that. That's more than I've ever had right there. At the end of the year when these are done, I'll cut them off. They'll grow new shoots next year. There's my owl. There's that Virginia creeper. It's um, it's creeping, but it's not doing nearly as much as I thought it would. Maybe next year it will. It's doing a little bit. That was obviously a, uh, a um, what do you call it? Um, well, you know, when a seed blows in, you don't plant it. A volunteer obviously came from his yard because there's one right there. Got a bucket here, some lavender type flowers. There's couple sunflowers, other volunteers. These guys up here are trying, but they can only do so much with the heat. Here's the sunflowers I planted. Now these guys are only supposed to be like two to four feet tall. They're definitely taller than that. They're like five feet. Some of them are six or seven feet, the one leaning over. So I guess you can't control what you get in a seed pack because they are all seeds. And, uh, the wind's been blowing quite a bit the last couple days, so a couple of them are bending over. One of them snapped. Only so much you can do with those. Here's a little plum tree I planted this year. So that'll that'll take another you know couple of years to get any fruit on it. Now this here is that purple world locust that the wind blew off a year or two ago. Snapped it right off, and I I always mention this. I cut it down with a chainsaw, just like three feet out of the ground. And you can see it's grown shoots. I guess you could call them suckers, whatever you want to call them on there. But um, to my surprise, look at how big it's gotten this year. So it'll never be a tree, but it is a purple robe locust bush now. And they usually flower first thing in the spring. This is uh, flowering late now, probably because of you know what it's morphed into. But it does have a few uh, pretty purple blooms on it. Let me get a better picture of what I'm talking about here. There you can see, I just totally cut that off at the top because the whole tree broke and those sprouted out and they're they're growing what you see here. Here's the half wine barrel with the chocolate bin in it. It's doing great. Really don't do anything with it, but if you break a leaf off, it smells just like chocolate mint. So those are always great. They always grow real well. Here's all the grasses and stuff over here that come back every year. Primroses really aren't blooming anymore. I think it's just too hot for them. That was about a month ago or so. Here's some more of those purple robe locust flowers on there. See, that's what that tree is there. But it's already, it's already bloomed. Look at all the marigolds. Those are from seeds from last year, and they just sprouted up doing their own thing now this here you can see the sun it's it's kind of taking its toll on it but um you know all i can do is keep it watered i'm sure next year it'll come back stronger it's not dying it's just struggling a little bit i did plant this this year so next year it should be much stronger now this here is my full wine barrel it's my fountain it's usually running and um after about four years, it seems to have sp sprung a leak in the bottom of it. And I tried to seal it up, and it doesn't matter. It's just leaking out too much. So I'm going to buy a new wine barrel this weekend and make a new fountain all over again, and I should get at least another four years out of it. See, because you can't really seal the inside up with anything, because if you do, the water can't penetrate the wood, the oak, and it'll just split on the outside. So it is what it is. But I'm going to... I'm gonna, Go get a new barrel. I'll stain it before I put it out here and do it the same exact way I have this one. So that'll be up and running soon. Uh, 
That's doing pretty good there. Here's these marigolds that come up from seed from last year. They're doing excellent. Those are marigolds are always great. They're not perennials or annuals, but they will um, they they will reseed and grow every year. So that's good. You can also collect the seeds and save them, spread them out next year. And then those are strawberries in there. Strawberries were producing. They're not anymore. I think it's just too hot for them. These over here in the barrel, they're doing pretty good. Some of the leaves are getting sunburnt, but they come back every year. These are survivors. Here's a sunflower, just a volunteer. It's probably going to be a ma I don't know if that's a mammoth. We'll find out. These strawberries, they're, they were producing. I don't think they're producing. Well, I guess they are. They're getting ready for some new ones. It's just so hot right now. Dry, I guess. Dry is the key word. Hot and dry. And then there's some late blooming uh, gladiolas right there. Really late blooming gladiolas. Here's another butterfly bush here. As you can see, it's also a little, little heat stressed, but um, it'll come back next year to probably do even better next year. These have mostly already bloomed. You can see they've already died off and there are tons of butterflies and hummingbirds. And at night you get like some um, great big like uh, um, you know, big, big moths. They almost look like hummingbirds are so big, like hawk moths maybe, or sphinx moth, something like that. And then here's another butterfly bush right there. The periwinkles, they bloomed earlier in the year. Purple flower, violet flower. You just get green, green leaves this time of year. No more, no more blooms on those. But they're doing pretty good. Some over here's got a few few sunburnt leaves, but overall, doing pretty good. And then there's the uh, climbing rose bush. I'm going to have to prune that again. That's getting kind of unruly there on the top. There's my weather vane up there that the kids got me for Father's Day. Anyways, folks, that's the backyard. Dog days of summer into July. That's what we got going on out here. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good out there.